Welcome to our next segment of Women Matters. Uh, today, Heidi has had some connectivity issues, uh, so she is unlikely to join us, uh, but we are carrying on. Um, <laughs> so our topic today is how to overcome challenges on our way towards co-creativity, and we're also incorporating how to transform challenges into stepping stones. So I'd just love to just take a moment to go around uh, our, our group and just have a little, a little check-in on that topic. Uh, does anyone want to start? Well, I'll just jump in and start. Um, so for me, um, I, I, I like the framing of transforming challenges into stepping stones uh, on our way towards co-creativity co because, you know, I think that in my life, um, the challenges that I've put in my way or the universe has put in my way has always had gifts. And for me, sometimes I'm like, wow, we need to change the world right now because this is a mess. <laughs> um, and I have big ideas about how to do that. But of course, the universe wants us to take one step at a time. And so invariably what happens for me is that uh, the, the universe breaks those things down into stepping stones for me in, for, in the form of challenges. And each of those challenges helps me to be able to, uh, to learn and to grow. And yeah, so I just wanted to kind of put that in our, in our circle to begin our session today. Um, what is the universe? You mentioned the universe several times. The universe is breaking down challenges. Uh, I am wondering about our belief systems. Uh, what kind of belief systems do we construct? to not to lose faith or not to just give up. And as I mentioned before this talk, when we talked offline, uh, how can our obsessions with things to do, projects, how can they prevent us from being in the now, being here, and really feeling and knowing and seeing each other and co-creating this way. This is what has kept me busy the last couple of weeks and I have still no solution and I'm trying to be patient because patience always helps, but yeah, I'm not a very patient person. Okay, that's my check-in, thank you. And Gertrude or Luna, did you want to just jump in? Okay, jumping in. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, questions. What is the universe? What are challenges? What are feelings? Why do we feel things? <laughs> uh, how do we transform I have lots of questions I don't have any answers 
today. <laughs> Some days I have answers. <laughs> today I just have more questions. Um, yeah. So it's nice to see you all. And um, uh, today the challenge is just being here and being present. And I'm overcoming that in this moment together. <laughs> hey, I created a little time mess because I somebody wanted to switch a coaching appointment to 4.30. And so, yeah, sure. And I had forgotten to put in our time, our date. And then all of a sudden, and then Heidi called me, and so she reminded me. So her breakdown <laughs> is what saved me from, um, yeah, failing here. And so I had to, I could rearrange it. And so I have to leave pretty, yeah. It, so it's, it's 6.30 that, <laughs> that I have another appointment. And so this, this was like, um, I was not present this morning and I was not present putting after we said, okay, when do we meet then to put it in the calendar and, um, but not beating myself up for that, but just, yeah, to, to see what needs to be done and what's appropriate, what's, um, and, um, yeah, so I'm I'm pretty calm though. the t the The day was like, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, and uh, I talked about my uh, my daughter who's who's uh, awaiting her second baby, and she is so. She, I mean, she's like an example for me, just to be in the moment and just something wonderful will happen <laughs> uh, uh, and that's that's uh i talked to her today and 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 i'm so like having a daughter like this it's like my heart is is just expanding and yeah and she she is is in this moment and being together with her daughter and they have so much fun together and so it's like wonderful more of this and even if it's not it's like it is <laughs> uh, yeah my two cents Oh. Go, go for it, Monica. That's wonderful. Yeah, I was wondering about Luna's questions. They are my questions as well. So, how can we turn these challenges into stepping stones? By sharing what is the universe for you? I don't know. Uh, but what is a stepping stone? Maybe we start here. What is a stepping stone for me? What has what have what stepping stones do I remember? This could be a way to approach this last topic. And I'm always wondering about the field, the quantum field of possibilities, and why don't we just pick more from it? So not just the raisins, but why don't we just yeah, we just are so focused on one thing that we we don't. And at least I am aware of the rest of possibilities, and that really gets me 
all right, now it sort of gets me furious that I'm so stubborn. <laughs> okay. But uh, maybe we could talk about stepping stones. I uh, have a cat meowing. Um, and uh, so my stepping stone is to open the door for her so if she stops crying. Um, yeah, just I wanted to, what shall I put in here? The universe for me is that which we can we are embedded in that is also of us. And I loved that piece that you said, Monica, around um, we can, uh, how do we actually interact with it? You know, there's all of these different potentialities that we can choose, but through our obsessions, like you mentioned earlier, and our, you know, our, our, the way that we focus our attention, uh, we're constraining what is possible in that quantum field. Um, and, and I think that the universe is much more magical and, uh, and actively creating than our belief systems uh, allow us to believe <laughs> because you know there's there's these um, you know the the social agreements on what is true and not true and I believe ha 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 I believe that a lot of what we collectively believe is a very limited picture of the actual capital T truth if there is such a thing um, and, and so I, I feel the universe as being something that is deeply co-creative with us. And, you know, I, I feel that my challenge is, is to break down my beliefs uh, and to continue to challenge those beliefs uh, with other people so that we can together understand more deeply. That's my next bit. I'm, I'm, I'm lacking of words <laughs> to, to find a way to, to, to say what I want to say. It's like, what if there is no out, there is no world out there, no universe out there. It's only how it occurs to us. And what if that occurring is the world we created or I created? And as I, who is that? <laughs> um, and So that co-creation or creation that, that there is no big difference. That creation is. Just now, just. 
and um, maybe sometimes it feels more alone sometimes it feels more co like and uh, yeah and I I don't have answers but um, to what if if I could just go back and forth like okay do projects and and do them very worldly and and uh, whatever one step after the other and but knowing that this is part of the game and who am i in this and and always like come to that now back and then have another project <laughs> and uh, have fun with it even though it, sometimes it isn't fun but uh, just this lightness of i if I'm, if I really know that there are endless possibilities, I can just go back and forth. And yeah, so this is in my mind <laughs> at the moment. And try to to find words to to bring that out. I'm just thinking about what a stepping stone is <laughs> in a very practical way. Um, in my mind's eye, um, I'm seeing a path of stepping stones through sort of a marshy or very wet landscape. So if I'm not on the stepping stone, I'm in unfirm ground where perhaps I can sink or get stuck. And that the stepping stone provides a momentary place to land. And it also creates stability. Something that, that meets me in a solid way. And allows me to um, have leverage for my foot. So I can find the next stepping stone. I know that in every challenge that we face, there's an equal or greater opportunity. Sometimes it's just finding it, it's really tough. I don't have a lot of words either, but <laughs> I have a visual, a visual landscape. <laughs> um, to me, stepping stones usually were things or books written by people who devoted a lot of time to them and produced uh, something of uh, yeah as, as, as Luna said it's just temporary but it's still something that gives you particularly if it's familiar and when you read many books of the same on the same subject finally you get to something familiar and then you <sighs> relax and say yeah that's on the other hand as Tammy said uh, uh, 
breaking down belief systems is still one of the hardest challenges wherever you are. And so why is there the need for belief systems? Uh, Wilbur's most recent book is about the religions of tomorrow. I haven't opened it yet. I am not interested in the religions of tomorrow. I want now. What is now? And I shouldn't, actually, I shouldn't mention that because I'm organizing Wilbur groups, but it's just the religion of tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, that's just another challenge that has to be broken down, I guess. For me, at least. Okay. I'm kind of excited to jump into beliefs. Um, and what's, you know, they, it feels like beliefs are so precious to us because they allow us to know something. <laughs> or feel that we do have, well, maybe it's that solid ground upon which our foot can s step so that we're not just flailing around in the universe um, in all of these unknowns that terrify us so much. Um, I, I had a series of insights when I was uh, uh, in 2000 that were insights around the alphabet. And uh, I, you know, call it the alphabet code. And essentially each of the letters has a specific meaning and they, they point to uh, a purpose. They point to uh, a purpose that is uncovered as you, um, in words, it points to purpose. But as a series of understandings, it, uh, it uncovers a pathway to progress our consciousness. So it's quite powerful. Um, and at the same time, in exploring it with myself, and this is not something that I created, but rather something that I perceived. And so um, that it, it feels like it builds on natural, the natural laws of the universe. Uh, now what that kind of shows, showed me as I've been working with it and, and exploring it uh, myself and with others is that, you know, it's again just another lens that shows us that everything we speak or see is, a, it tells us much more about the lens itself than it does what is, what is being seen and who is seeing. And so, uh, you know, language is, the, is one of the lenses through which we are uh, sharing information. And so there's, there's a, I have a lot of curiosity around breaking down our beliefs around even the fundamental isness of things in terms of the lenses that we use to be able to perceive them in the first place. So I have a lot of questions about those lenses, whether it be language or our, our perceptions. And there's a lot of, I love that space of co-creativity between us where we share what it is we think we know or what we think we see so that we can kind of have that reflective, um, process of coming to understanding together. Um, and I think that that feels like a really powerful work of co-creativity um, in a really fundamental way. I'm wondering about your insights about the alphabet because I, one of the books that really turned my universe upside down was the ciphers of the genesis uh, by a spanish author about the letters of the kabbalah 
I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm not quite sure what happened. It was an internet problem. So we're, we've, we're beset by some internet problems. <laughs> I'm really feeling the comedy of this meeting today. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> the challenge of the meeting. <laughs> Let's turn it into a stepping stone for our next one. <laughs> so, can you hear me now? Or? We can, and now you're quite low in sound. Okay. Then We're finding the happy medium. Okay, okay. That feels good. Still, I don't get, yeah, I didn't say anything. That feels good. <laughs> um, I'm wondering whether our co-creativity means that we focus light through our lenses on certain spots where there has been darkness before. This is something I can imagine as co-creativity. What do you think about it? Do you have any idea what you mean by darkness, where there was darkness? Uh, things you haven't paid any attention to, things that are shadows. Um, not just things, it's just mind, mind concepts, concepts, belief systems. We're again at our belief systems, yeah. Uh, and as I don't know who said it, but uh, it's if you go into the collective belief system, it's difficult to do it alone. Yeah, there is the collective and the individual into so it's not separate. Mine is part of the collective, but also dis distinct, <laughs> but not separate. And you were drawing some fr from some integral theory with that, hey, Gertrude? It was just an observation that my, um, and maybe I can share a, a, an individual um, blind spot or dark spot um, that I just discovered. Uh, a few days ago, I had a coaching session, just a normal. <laughs> And uh, one of which was like how to um, market the book, how to to go out and, and uh, call for book release sessions or whatever. And then I realized that I'm I, I'm really. Um, yeah, I think I can I can use the word scared of of people that I don't know enough. Like I don't know their home, I don't know their disc. I if I don't have a visual part of where that is, where I'm calling, it's it's like as if my whole system is is re, uh, reluctant to to do that. And it was because talking with you, talking with uh, friends or um, people I know quite well, this is no problem. Um, so I, to make the, the story short, I, I realized just for a few little tiny questions from my coach. And all of a sudden I was in that where... I came home 
from boarding school, I, I was in a nun's boarding school for five years. And I, when my parents just thought we're baked, <laughs> we are um, high educated, <laughs> everything is well. And so, and I came to a public school where there were, were boys and and all this was like, and my, my mom, when, she, when I had to go to the dentist, she said, well, call him. And for me, each and every step was like being, having been in a, in a cage. And then all of a sudden you open the door and say, here is the jungle, go out there and you make it. And, and just realizing how I was in that survival mode at that time. I, and, and for a long time I was like, okay, I did this and there were some challenges, but I, I really realized how frightened I was, how like really boys could come up and, and just say, I, you know, just over my, my shoulder and I was blushing and, Oh, God, was that, um, and, and I, I, I didn't want to call people or where I, I don't know the, the, um, territory is really like <laughs> in that jungle and, and that prevents me today from just going out and talking with people, which I don't mind all the time. But there's a specific way which brought me back to that uh, jungle-like feeling. And yeah, with body therapy and this and that and coaching, training. And I never really, and it was such a big relief to know it's over I'm and 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 I felt such a I really did a good job to 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 live through that time and I'm here and I've raised great kids and you know like I even can survive in the jungle <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's this is my individual part, but um, that prevents me from cooperation with others that I don't know the territory, territory of. So. Uh, are you familiar with the TV series, Mr. Monk? Uh, with the music, it's a jungle out there. And he has all these habits, like touching all the posts or, or uh, being overly clean. And, and this uh, actually, so it's already a movie, so um, a movie series. And uh, he has, his intelligence is much too, much too uh, overwhelming because he can solve all these difficult problems but he can't live ordinary life. So because he thinks it's a jungle out there and he has to defend himself. And, to, and this jungle problem, to make this jungle problem into a stepping stone would be quite challenging. Mm -hmm. I feel something bubbling in Luna's zone, but I don't want to. I don't want to push. I can just feel it there. Well, I I go back to sort of um, <laughs> what I've been immersing myself in, which is these ideas around um, deep ecology and. Um, domestication and I was just thinking about the jungle metaphor and I don't know that I've made sense of <laughs> where my mind was going so you were seeing that happen but I 
I was wondering about how we might use the challenges like like tools that we become so uh, that they become companions that the fear becomes a companion that the terror as our teacher says the terror of our situation becomes a companion that our death becomes a companion uh, I was thinking about how we've created these landscapes uh, and sort of where we're at in our civilization as human beings right now and how we've covered so much of this earth with our domestication of it, you know, and our need to control out of a desire to be safe and to know things or think we know things. And uh, th there's someone that I um, uh, like to listen to his name is Daniel Vitalis and he, he uh, talks about rewilding and he was talking about um, how that's affected us to not have any predators anymore as human beings and so I was thinking about the jungle and, and the jungle environment and, and the jungle being full of potential predators for us um, but what we've what we've lost in sort of not having predators is uh, maybe our ability to keenly listen um, to deeply know the land and ourselves um, because it meant our survival. So that's sort of where my, uh, where my mind started going with that. Yeah, and that so much of this domestication has been about pushing away, pushing away, pushing the fear away. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering what it might look like to pick the fear up and, and walk with it like a walking stick, something like that. Uh, I'm starting to unpack in my own journey just how much fear I walk with all the time, but I'm, I'm always pushing it away. I'm trying to, uh, you know, it's like being in the dark and having the flashlight and the flashlight creates this ring around you, but it, it almost becomes more terrifying because I really can't see what's beyond the ring of the flashlight. You know, I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm really, um, I'm creating more unknown through that and so oftentimes when I am camping or I'm in the dark I'll actually turn off the flashlight and stop and, and take some deep breaths and really feel the space and then really try to see my way without any light uh, and you know without any manufactured light Yeah, I don't, I don't want to push, I, it's become exhausting to push the fear away. I want to learn how to walk with it. Uh, would you say, Luna, that our belief systems are like the ring of the flashlight? That's a great question. Yes. <laughs> I, f I feel in my, in my being, yes. Uh, yes, and it's a really tricky one because uh, they're so embedded. And, and what do we have as, a, as an anchor, as that rooted place when we take them away? And that's, that is terrifying. Um, maybe, it's, maybe it's freedom. Maybe that's liberation. Um, yeah, I see so much of how we are and what we've done is sort of hung on the constructs of these belief systems that we 
really aren't having these deep ongoing conversations about we're just accepting them uh, and they and they rule our lives they really rule the way that we do things and I don't even know what they all are but I am curious about that I think it's even going beyond belief systems sometimes or many times for into our system in our society or so it like that's the way it is so we don't even believe it we think we, we are that or we we never question it. We don't even know that we believe it. <laughs> so, um, just, of course it is like that. Um, and I was thinking when you talked about fear, Luna, I was thinking that phrase of overcoming fear, maybe that's the attempt to domesticize, dom, domes, whatever that word is, uh, the fear, <laughs> and not being with it, and not um, what you said, to, to be aware of, of that and do whatever, so as a walking stick or whatever. Uh, but over it's like at this moment it feels like that's trying to it handle <laughs> and not just being with that so, I mean fear is also something really big something really they're down to life. <laughs> I just had this, this uh, image of being afraid of giving birth. And so I, I'd rather take a cesarean, not because it's necessary, but because I'm too much afraid of going through that. Well, I guess yeah. giving birth is just too too wide a topic. <laughs> I guess we could use several sessions for that. But of course, it's foremost on your mind with your daughter. That's true. Uh, but to me, giving birth was one of the, or maybe, yeah, one of the only experiences when you really are one with whatever is and you just give in to and go in go with it you go with you go with, i never had a cesarean <laughs> but uh, your will is no longer required it's just devotion you, you devote yourself to what is to the universe or whatever you might call it so and it's very difficult to uh, explain that to a man. Very difficult. 
well, even for a woman, I've never had a child and I won't be having a child in this life. So I haven't had that experience. So I can, uh, I can feel into what that might be, but I don't have the direct experience to, to really know what that is. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, as a, as a woman who's chosen to not bear children in this life, um, yeah, I just wanted to also add that into our circle. Because how do we know if we don't experience, and this kind of does weave into our topic, you know, if we have a direct experience of something, we have the capacity to perhaps, to, to, and I say perhaps, no. Yeah, Gertrude. What I wanted to say, and, and uh, Monica, you're right, <laughs> this is on the forefront of my head, um, this, this topic. But um, what I wanted to say that within Burham, to, to shy away from fear and to shy away from pain doesn't work. And you overcome it, <laughs> maybe with a cesarean, uh, then you are knocked out and, and that's good. But just that and... and um, and that was my analogy. It's not that we, I wanted to go deep into that theme, <laughs> uh, which is uh, a whole new topic in itself. And uh, it, I was just refer, uh, referring to what Luna said with, uh, uh, with the fear and the, the walking stick and not pushing it away or thinking when I put the, the flashlight on, then <laughs> it's all handled. And you believe that, you believe <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that overcoming fear is like domesticating it? That we should just always use fear? I, 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 would, I had just had that, that, I didn't say that is, but I just had this question in my mind. Is that a phrase in itself to, to, to handle it somehow? Overcoming fear. And there was more a question than an answer. So maybe being aware of fear, respecting fear, uh, being guided by fear, uh, but not overwhelmed. <laughs> and maybe it's useful for a powerful thing that helps me like the, the walking stick or giving me the power to go through or whatever that might be to maybe it lends me its power if I don't try to push it away. Sorry, Tammy. I love that. You know, I love that piece of, being with it as a teacher, as a friend, as a guide. Um, and in just feeling into your question around, you know, uh, is this attempt to kind of deal with fear, um, is that domesticating it? It does, it feels like that. I feel some truth in there of, well, if we can just understand it we can put it in its little box and have it go over there <laughs> um, and I love the visual of using fear as a walking stick as a pal um, and really kind of giving it uh, not equal stature because it is a stick in our hand that we are able to uh, work with because I think it's really important for us to um, 
to respect or acknowledge our consciousness and our sentience uh, and not be in dominion necessary, necessarily over our fear, but know that we do have uh, power to be able to choose to be with it in whatever way serves us best. And I love the idea of allowing it to inform us and be itself so that we can garner that wisdom and knowledge that is embodied by that emotion that drives us in so many ways. Uh, also, I just want to note that we have about another five minutes for our session today, so perhaps we can we can uh, wrap up with our with our reflections. I'm going to jump in. Oh, no, Luna has. You go, Luna. Uh, there's, there's so many things, so I'm just going to try to... Um, yeah, I really like this... Going into this conversation about um, how we walk with these feelings that we push away. Um, I, so the birth, the birth piece, <laughs> uh, I was thinking about rites of passage. So giving birth is a rites of passage. Um, the, the threshold between, um, a, being a youth and becoming an adult is, uh, there traditionally would be or tribally would be a rites of passage is something that we've lost and i think we've lost it in a lot of ways and that um like you mentioned tammy not everyone uh not every woman is going to give birth or not every person is going to go through a marriage ritual whatever that means or whatever these sort of like these these rituals that we now have that are a part i mean marriage is a part of our domestication i feel um, so lots of big topics here, but, um, yeah, I, I just wonder about really letting the, letting fear speak, um, as a companion. And finding ways to create rites of passage. I think through those rites of passages, we meet fear and we move through it. So the fear of giving birth, uh, it must be met and moved through. It must, it must. Uh, when a child is uh, sent on a vision quest to become an adult, they must go through that dark night by themselves in the jungle or the forest uh, alone, you know, and, and, and meet themselves and move through it. Um, I'm thinking about your, your skunk story, Tammy, that you shared recently about being, uh, sitting in, sitting in the fear and, uh, and being with it and that through these rites of passages, we have an opportunity to strengthen that relationship and to be with that relationship. But we actually have the domestication that we've created is we've created all these ways that we don't have to feel things. And isn't it lovely? <laughs> you know, I can, I can numb my feelings with food or with entertainment um, or with just all the pretty things that we create or the, the, the sense, sen, sense, sensory, uh, creations, all of our creations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which can become distractions. 
and stop us from really meeting ourselves. I feel. So I'll, I will leave today with curiosity around this and definitely want to explore it further. So I'll, ju I'll jump in um, and just give a little snapshot of that skunk story to, to share a little bit about that. It was a big transition moment in my life. Um, I had uh, gone to visit a friend after having a, quite a traumatic event happen and having to make a choice to, for myself. And I was sitting on the porch and there was this little baby skunk that sort of was kind of maybe 20 feet away and then it came to a bush about 10 feet away and then it came right over to me and turned around with its tail up. And so there was this, there was this, it just slowly came to me and I had this really um, slow but growing, oh my goodness, that's a skunk. And then it turned and it was about three feet away from me. And so I just had to stay there in this intense primal fear because it really is, it's like, it's like seeing a snake or something, you know, you, you know, this is, this could go really badly. <laughs> and then it didn't spray me. I just stayed with the fear and breathed through it. And it came around back of me and sniffed my back. And I just had to continue to stay with this little baby skunk. And it was probably two or three minutes that felt like an eternity. Um, and I just, I just stayed with it. And the little guy just sort of went off into the bushes right beside and I really felt like that was a powerful initiation. Um, and uh, so anyways, that was, that was that fear moment. And thank you so much, Luna. She has her next session and uh, as does Gertrude uh, in 10 minutes. So I'm sorry for taking that time, but I'll just pass this on to our wrap up. I'm wondering how to deepen our conversation, uh, our dialogue. Uh, I've made some notes, but I guess you also have. And uh, so maybe some of the topics will evolve. Um, and I would, I think it would be a shame just to forget what we spoke today and go on next time. So I'm going to take some of the notes and send them to you. Thank you. And Gertrude, did you want to wrap us up with the last word? <laughs> Thank you. What I loved today was that we had so many silent moments in between. Um, this, like, this conversation is not normal. <laughs> and, and to find words and, and uh, like, as if I can remember when I first ate a mango, it it was like, it's not peach, it's not carrot, it's not, but what is it? So, um, so I didn't have um, this taste already um, saved in my computer. And, and somehow it felt like this, to, to find this taste, this word, this, yeah. To to and and so I'm I'm very grateful for that conversation and I would love to to taste more mango <laughs> and uh, yeah 
Thank you very much. And thank you, Monica, for, for taking the notes. I didn't. I, <laughs> I was so here. And, and uh, so it's great. And um, a hello to Heidi. And so next time she'll join us again, hopefully. Yeah. Thank you. And Monica, did you have any final thoughts? Uh, well, I was wondering about the challenges of today's conversation for so for Heidi, for example, and uh, maybe we could also like fear was one of the main topics. So maybe we could just crystallize what the topics were and maybe list them and see where they lead to. This would be my idea of. Yeah, as I'm always very organized. <laughs> yeah, and thank you for providing the space, Tammy. I'm glad you managed. I couldn't. <laughs> and thank you, Gertrude. And all the best to your daughter, of course. <laughs> Yeah. Wonderful. And with that, thank you all so much for coming. And, uh, and we're obviously sad to, to miss Heidi, but she is held here in our group. And uh, I look forward to the next time that all of us can be together to progress these conversations and dialogues. Thank you. <laughs>